Hi, this is Mike from Mike's and Mike's and Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at the MSI RTX 4070 Ti Gaming X Trio, a rather expensive graphics card, which is something that I aspire to. Keep watching to find out why. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at the MSI RTX 4070 Ti Gaming X Trio. As you can see here, this is a beast of a card. Now, unfortunately, it also comes with a beastly price tag, which is unfortunate, but can't really blame MSI too much for it. The MSRP from NVIDIA for the RTX 4070 Ti series began at £799 here in the United Kingdom. Currently, at the moment, at the time of recording, which is the 3rd of August 2023, you can pick up this particular model, which is actually one of the higher tier models on the market, for somewhere in the region of about £760. So just slightly under the MSRP of the RTX 4070 Ti. And you're possibly thinking, why would I actually want to buy a graphics card like this? Well, actually, there's plenty of reasons why you might want to, but there's also obviously the reason why you possibly can't. And essentially that is going to be the price. So hopefully this video is going to last the test of time and as the prices drop and people come back and think actually RTX 4070 Ti is a pretty decent price now, which model should I get? So hopefully this is going to help you choose which one. So let's go through and rattle off some of the specifications, although most of you probably know all this stuff by now but we'll go through it anyway. And of course as always there will be links to both MSI themselves so you can pick up the details from them and also there will be some shopping links from places like Amazon, eBay etc etc. So starting off with the specifications, we're looking at 7,680 CUDA cores. We're looking at the AD104 5 nanometer process actual GPU unit itself. We're looking at 12 gigs of GDDR6X memory, all of which is running on a 192-bit bus, which the bus thing is one of those things with modern cards, which seems to be one of those really key issues. Now, obviously, previous models were on 256-bit bus or... 384 etc but due to the way that the architecture is changing and evolving they're basically upping the clock speeds and reducing the bus which kind of one should pretty much negate the other and talking of the actual bus speeds or cpu speeds this one has a kind of boost clock of 2760 megahertz which is actually a little bit more than the stock version or the kind of the reference version if there was one because of course with the RTX 4070 Ti, there isn't actually a Founders Edition, so you can only go on the base specs, of which the base model would be somewhere in the region of about 200 megahertz slower. Having said that, in my testing, I have found this card to actually far exceed those ratings anyway, and I've been getting boost speeds of somewhere around the 2820 megahertz range, so yeah, a nice little bump in performance there. And of course, this is all done because of the way that these NVIDIA cards work, and most components these days, whereas if you've got enough power, enough cooling, then they'll basically boost to the moon and back depending on that situation. Obviously, if you're in a very hot environment or a cramped case and it's getting a little bit toasty, then things are going to start slowing down, which is where this card does absolutely fantastic because this is obviously a triple fan design. The Trio X range from MSI is always fantastic for cooling. Not only do they look spectacular, but the cooling performance is absolutely legendary. And this one is no difference at all. The sheer physical weight of this thing, so if you are concerned and maybe you're going to have to put this in a portable PC, this graphics card weighs in at somewhere around about 1.6 kilos, which is absolutely monstrous. And it is a triple slot card as well, so make sure you've got plenty of room in your PC. Going back to the uh, the boost speeds and clock speeds, there's actually two biases on this card as well, so if you do want to uh, tweak things around a little bit, you can do. There is a gaming mode and also a silent mode. And to be completely honest with you, in my testing, I found literally no difference between them at all. And in fact, looking at MSI specs, they have specified that regardless if you're in gaming or silent mode, the boost speeds and clock speeds are absolutely identical. The only thing which is different is a slightly different fan ramp, which again, you can actually change in MSI Center should you want to, or obviously MSI Afterburner. Other specifications of note, it comes with the NVIDIA 16 pin connector. So you're gonna wanna make sure your power supply has got that connector if at all possible, but don't worry if it doesn't, don't panic. It's absolutely fine. MSI have provided actually a really nice little adapter in the box, which converts two PCI Express 8 pins into a single 16 pin 
the new modern style PCI Express Gen 5 type connection, so you've got no problems there whatsoever. Of course, obviously, if you have a power supply, such as the thermal tape one we've been using, then you will have that connector straight away natively. And if you're wondering what sort of power supply you're gonna to need to power a beastie like this, MSI are actually recommending a 700 watt power supply, although it looks like Nvidia are recommending slightly less at 600 watts. I guess this is a kind of slightly factory overclock version, so they are playing on the side of caution there. Although realistically, in terms of actually when you're using this card, you're gonna be looking at somewhere between the sort of 250 to 285 watts is the kind of likely outcome of what you're gonna draw. If you then take into account the power excursions, which these cards are known for, which can momentarily double that output or requirement, then yeah, I suppose the 600 or 700 watt does make a bit more sense. Obviously other key features, as this is part of the 4000 series, you do have DLSS version three and also frame generation. So if you're someone who plays games which support DLSS and also frame generation, then this can really, really make an incredible difference in those titles should you want to. And also don't forget, this is an Nvidia card, so clearly it supports ray tracing or RTX. Now this is now using the newer third generation ray tracing cores and also the fourth generation of tensor cores. Along with that, you've also got all of the kind of AI trick enhancements. And also if you're into streaming or recording your gameplay in OBS and things like that, and don't forget, obviously, you've got NVENC Encoder, which is absolutely fantastic for both H.264 and H.265 content. But if you want to use AV1, don't worry, that's got you covered as well. So this has got NVIDIA's NV1 for both encoding and decoding, which again, as that becomes more and more popular, it's going to be more and more widespread and will reduce bandwidth, but without having to actually sacrifice any of your visual quality, or at least none that you can see with the naked eye. Okay, so I've ravaged on long enough. Let's take a look at the box very, very quickly. So yeah, you can see what it's all about here. So RTX 4070 Ti Gaming X Trio, DLLS 3, Ray I'm really struggling with DLLS, -S. I'll give up that bit. Ray Tracing, Reflex, and obviously Nvidia Studio. So if you're a creator, all those Nvidia Studio niceties are all built in. So that is absolutely great for productive types. On the back, some of the more MSI specific features. So you've got obviously the triple fan, the frozer fans. You've also got airflow control core pipes this thing has got an absolute ton of heat pipes in it the cooler itself is massive we'll take a look at the car shortly the cooler is massive and it's got six heat pipes so effectively it's like strapping on a noctua d15 onto your gpu it's actually probably heavier than a d15 but you get the idea it's a monster cooler it really is obviously yeah, msi center you're probably seeing some b-roll here of me messing around in msi center and changing things like the lighting and of which let's take a look at the graphics card and see what it's all about so this is the card itself, and this thing is ridiculously heavy, it is insanely heavy. But don't worry, MSI have actually included a bracket as well, so there is a support bracket. Actually, a lot of MSI cards now are getting these, so if you're not going to be mounting it in a vertical situation like this, which I strongly suggest you do, because I think this looks really, really nice. But if you want to, obviously, when it's down this way, you might get a little bit of sag, so that bracket will help you out there. And looking at the card, I think it's actually a really nice car to look at. Of all the video cards on the market, I think MSI, especially in this triple fan configuration, the Trio X range, or just the Trio range in general, they all look really, really nice. You've got some accents for RGB here, which possibly you're seeing for some B-roll, but I'm, I didn't really get any angles like this. But you can see what it's all about. You've got the new improved fans, uh, more downdraft. They have just tweaked these fans over and over again. They kind of look the same as what they did before, but they make very subtle adjustments to them to make them run very well. They're more efficient now than they were. And you can see this in the game. And literally, when you're playing games, this thing's silent. It really is. The heatsink does a fantastic job, and the fans are basically unaudible. I've never noticed them running. They probably were, but I've never heard them. So if you like a very quiet PC, definitely this is one to put on your shopping list. Looking at this angle, you can see the actual physical size of the heatsink. It's absolutely insane. And on the back there, you can see where the six heat pipes run to the very end. It is an absolute beast. And of course, you have got the 16 pin connector there. And next to the 16 pin connector is something which might be useful for some people if you want it even quieter. I've been using it in gaming mode pretty much completely. I didn't realize it had the switch first of all, so I was running it in silent mode. I thought, well, I'll try gaming mode, see if it makes any difference at all. And realistically, I didn't notice any difference at all. It's still extremely quiet and still extremely fast. 
Obviously, metal backplate on there you'd expect at this kind of price point. And on the back, connectivity wise, not a great deal to speak of connectivity wise, but it covers pretty much most of the bases. You've got DisplayPort 1.4, you've also got HDMI 2.1A, so that's going to support up to 8K 60 Hz, I believe it is, and also things like variable refresh rate, etc. All of the testing that we've been doing today is at 4K. Uh, my monitor is only 4K 60, but I've just unleashed the frames and let them just do whatever they want to. So if the capture card hasn't quite kept up, it isn't because of this thing, it's literally because this is just so powerful. It really, really is. So I think that is pretty much it for the card itself. Yeah, very heavy. The, the actual physical dimensions I'll put on the screen here now if you're worried about physically fitting it inside your PC. I think with that said, let's take a look at some gameplay and see how she does. So let's take a look at some synthetics first of all. So we've got Unigine's Heaven. So this is running in 4K. And for some reason, it seems to think that the clock speed is uh, 3135 megahertz which I don't think it is. It may have boosted to that very, very briefly for a millisecond, it's kind of hung there. I think it's a bug in the software. This is a pretty old benchmark now. But as you can see, even at 4K with everything pumped up, we're getting 3,814 points with lows of 63 frames per second and the highs of 347. So 4K, Minimum is going to be 60 frames per second in this kind of game. This is running an older DirectX version, which gives you an idea of the raw power. Next up, taking a look at Time Spy. This is also running 4K, and Time Spy is a pretty decent benchmark these days. A lot of people use it, and we got a pretty decent result. Well, we got a good result from what we can tell. Apparently, these things overclock like crazy, so our score was in the good range. So we're looking at 20,586 points there as our 3D Mark score. And mostly this was running again megahertz wise at 2820 is what I've seen most of the time. Obviously you've watched it as well, you can see what the uh, speeds are, which again is a little bit more than what it should be. So we're looking at about 75, 70 megahertz over the kind of rated boost speeds, which potentially it could go even higher than that with a little bit of tweaking. Next up, we're gonna look at some actual gameplay. So this is CSGO. Now this is CSGO 4K. I've turned everything up that I possibly can, including anti-aliasing. This looks ridiculously crisp, it really does. There's no jagged edges absolutely anywhere, and zoom in right in, it just looks absolutely amazing. I didn't really think CSGO could look this good, but it is actually standing the test of time, even though this is a really old title now, and CSGO 2 is just around the corner, can't wait for that. Even so, we're looking at somewhere between 250 and 300 frames per second with this, pretty much all day long. So if you are into competitive gaming and you still want to play at 4K, which kind of isn't a competitive resolution, but still nonetheless, if CSGO is your thing, 250 plus frames per second at 4K with everything cranked up. Going from one extreme to the other, so now we're going to look at Cyberpunk 2077. This is running the 4K overdrive setting, so this is RTX to the max. This is a pretty new section within the Cyberpunk game, and even with this, we are looking at 60 FPS, this is pretty much as a minimum, I think got 58, I think was the lowest recorded, but for argument's sake, 60 to 75 frames per second in the benchmark run. In gameplay, as you're probably seeing as well, just in the uh, the streets there of the city, all the ray tracing on, all the lighting, etc. it looks absolutely amazing. And we're looking again somewhere between 60 to 80 FPS, 4K, overdrive mode, this is nuts. Something I will say though, looking at the MSI Afterburner, taking a look at the RAM usage, now we can see with this, we're looking at somewhere reason about just over 11 gigabytes. Now this card only comes with 12 gigabytes, so potentially it's kind of getting towards the top of where it can be. Now obviously this is 4K ultra settings, this is pretty much the most punishing it's gonna be, but it is definitely something to bear in mind, we are getting close to that limitation here. Would have been really nice for this card to have a 16 gigabyte limit, but sadly it is what it is. So 12 is what we're stuck with and we are getting rather close to it. Next up again, which is gonna get nowhere near that limit. So we're looking at Rocket League again. This is 4K, all the max settings and pretty much 300 frames per second all day long. Again, clock speeds, 28, 20 thereabouts. It does dip up and down every now and then, but not very often. It pretty much locked in solid. And something I should say as well, whilst doing this, it's all pretty silent. The CPU is actually uh, making the fans in the system ramp up a little bit, but the actual GPU is doing absolutely fine. And in pretty much all the games, you're very rarely gonna see it go over 70 degrees Celsius. 
mostly you're going to be around about the 65, maybe 67. Every now and then you'll get a peak to 72, but then it'll drop straight down again. So yeah, cooling wise runs very, very well. And the gameplay is awesome, very, very slick. And actually, if you look at the frame times, the frame times are very, very low. So super responsive, which is exactly what you want in competitive titles. Next up, we're going to be using War Thunder, and I thought we'd really try and punish this a little bit. And there is a mode called Movie Mode, or Cinema Mode. So this is 4K Cinema Mode, and this is running, again, like an absolute dream. We're looking at somewhere between 200 and 250 frames per second. I didn't know where the frame counter was. It's actually in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. Uh, if the overlay isn't working, which for some reason it doesn't seem to, because it's an online game, and it thinks that the... MSI Afterburner is some kind of hack or tool to help you in the game. It obviously isn't, so it's hard to actually benchmark this one, but 200 to 250 frames per second all day long, and it looks gorgeous. Something else which looks absolutely gorgeous and plays like an absolute slippery thing on oil. This is Wreckfest 4K Ultra, 180 FPS, very easily done. And this, even at this high setting, is only using up around about six gigabytes of RAM. Clearly, depending on the map you're running, if it's a rather large one, very open, lots of textures, it's going to bump up a little bit. But even with this 4K Ultra, only using six gigabytes of RAM, this is a really well optimized game and really does run well on this RTX 4070 Ti. Next up, we've got Dead Island 2. This is actually an AMD title, so don't be expecting too much regardless. Uh, it is heavily favoring AMD in this particular game, but still, I thought, what the hell, let's go for 4K Ultra. We're paying a lot of money for this, so let's uh, crank it. Um, yeah, it still runs really, really nice. Around about 70 to 100 frames per second. Again, this is one of those games where when there's a lot going on, it does slow down even the most ninja of systems and depending on the lighting, they've done a clever thing, I've said this before in other reviews, they do a clever thing in this game so that when there's a lot going on or some of the high intensity kind of uh, kill moves, that it slows the frame down to kind of give you that slow motion perspective, which obviously helps the graphics card immensely. Something else to consider in this, this is another newer title with it running 4K Ultra with everything cranked to the max, we are getting towards that 12 gigabyte limit. So this is running about 11 gigabytes so it is a little bit of a warning sign of things to come. Running out of VRAM is never a good thing to do. It's going to mean reducing settings. Although at the moment we're at 4K Ultra, you can't really go much higher than that. So we're all good for now. Next up, something which I actually thought was going to punish this card a lot heavier than it did, but for some reason it didn't. So this is Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. This is running at 4K Ultra settings. Everything cranked up, RTX on, and we're looking at somewhere between 80 to 100 frames per second. Again, this is going to be one of those titles where, depending where you are, cloud density, lighting, all that kind of stuff, it is going to fluctuate relatively wildly, depending where you are. Obviously, if it's night time and you're really high up, like 30,000 feet or something, there's not really a great deal to render, so it's quite an easy job to do. Whereas if you're in direct sunlight in maybe the mountains or something, then it is going to be a little bit more challenging. Having said that, again, RAM-wise, we're looking at using around about 11 gigabytes of RAM, which is, as I've always said, getting towards that limit of 12 gigabytes. We are at 4K Ultra, so there isn't a great deal more you could do, but if you install some of those add-ons for this particular title, which do increase texture sizes, you may start struggling or need to lower your resolution or texture sizes. Overall though, extremely playable, very enjoyable, and this is one of those titles which actually does use DLSS 3 and also frame generation, and because it's one of those games where it doesn't really have that kind of twitchy response, it looks and feels absolutely butter smooth. And last up for today, an NVIDIA title, so this should shine, this is Fortnite. Again, this is 4K epic settings, everything cranked up. I've tried it with two things, one with RTX on and one with RTX off, and realistically it doesn't make a huge difference in terms of frame rates unless you're thinking of competitive play. Now with RTX off, we're looking at somewhere between 80 to 120 frames per second, again depending where you are in the map. 
With RTX on and the enhanced lighting, lumen, all that kind of stuff, you're looking at somewhere between 60 and 80 FPS. So if you do want that little boost, turn RTX off. And to be honest, I cannot really tell the difference between the two. There are gonna be some areas where if you go to the center of the map, where you've got the skyscrapers and you've got the rain effects, the puddles, etc. Those are areas where you can take a look at and you can actually see kind of what the lighting pathing is doing. It doesn't look particularly different, but it is hardware assisted, so it just looks a little clearer and the reflections are absolutely amazing in this game. So there you go, there are some examples of 4K gameplay with the RTX 4070 Ti from MSI. This is the Gaming X Trio. And I gotta say, this is gonna be one of those graphics cards which is really, really hard to return to MSI. This is actually only a loaner. I've not bought this and they've not actually paid for the review. They asked me, would I like to check out some of their cars? There was an option of a 4060 Ti, 4070 or 4070 Ti. And I figure, to be honest with you at the moment, this one is kind of the more sensible choice. If there is a thing in the graphics card market these days, when you look at what is around for brand new of this generation, realistically, this competes with the RX 7900 XT, very similar price points. The two are kind of jostling around and it's always going to be one of those things. Obviously the Radeon's got more RAM. This has more features. Potentially this is slightly more energy efficient. It's very much going to be swings and roundabouts. If you're very much an Nvidia person or you are a creator and you rely heavily on those CUDA cores or AV1, NVENC encoding, those kinds of things, then it's actually really hard to go down the Radeon route for obvious reasons. But if you're just a, uh, a regular gamer and you want to play your games, again, okay, it's going to come down to the thing. If the games you love to play are NVIDIA titles, you kind of got to go RTX. If they're AMD titles, then yeah, obviously that side of it as well. At the moment, for around about £760, this is a heck of a lot of card. It does compete relatively well with the RTX 3090. So if you think of how much an RTX 3090 was, and how much this physically is, then there is some kind of economy in the newer generation, but it's probably a good idea not to get into the cost inside of things because we're all still a little bit raw from that, so we won't go into it too much. But obviously, if you're looking for a brand new card, you wanna go for an RTX 4070 Ti, you want one which is gonna be power efficient, very, very quiet, and have pretty much top tier specs, then I think the uh, Gaming X Trio from MSI is definitely well worth a look. But what I think about it isn't important. What you think about it is. So let us know in the comment section. Sound off. I know you're going to get upset with the pricing on this. I feel you. I know exactly where you're coming from. And if you got to the very end of this video and you've watched through and you've understood what I've said and you've listened to it all, then hopefully you can see where I'm coming from. I'm looking at this as a potential future investment or if the prices drop down significantly, possibly spring to it as a, uh, a very much a treat for oneself but ultimately if you are one of these people where your parents or someone or your business said right you have x amount of money to build a pc this is what you've got when you go through and you're specking up and you're looking for a 700 to 800 pound graphics card this i feel has to be on your short list anyway i've waffled on for way too long let us know your thoughts down below but for now i've been mike this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.